this doesn't have the Christoph, your screen is all out of focus.
That was great. Wonderful to see all those bright shining faces from our community and our families. Um, we'll mute everyone now so that we can uh, begin. In many countries and in the Eastern Rite and Orthodox churches, the Feast of Epiphany is celebrated as a greater day than Christmas. Sometimes it's called Three Kings Day or Little Christmas. At Christmas, Jesus is born and received as the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham and the Jewish people. At Epiphany, Jesus is manifest as savior of all nations, a light of revelation to the Gentiles. In your home, your domestic church, join us in the prayer and song of our extended Christmas celebration. Our prayers are requested for uh, Ramona Sanders, uh, who died at the age of 97, the grandmother of Sally Soleil from our community. We thank the uh, Higgins family for being our public voice of uh, prayer responses and invite you to join in at home as well. Our song of gathering is the beautiful hymn, What Child Is This?
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace and love of God our Father, shown forth in Christ, who was born for our salvation, be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, the message of Christ on this Feast of Epiphany echoes in the hearts of each one of us. The elderly hear the call to integrity and wisdom, the middle-aged to responsibility and creative living. The young hear the call to discovery and adventure. To find Christ at any stage in our lives is to find ourselves. Let us follow the star and with the magi find our way to Jesus. We praise God with the song of the angels, the Gloria. Glory to God in, in the highest, highest and, and on earth, earth peace to his people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, you we adore you, we glorify you. you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. We have seen the star of your glory rising in splendor, Lord God of the nations. The radiance of your word made flesh pierces the darkness that covers the earth and signals the dawn of justice and peace. May his brightness illumine our lives and beckon all nations to walk in your light. We ask this through Emmanuel, your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. When the Jewish people began slowly to return from exile in Babylon, their capital city of Jerusalem was desolate. The prophet today encourages them with images of brightness, then surprises them with the prediction that they will attract all nations to God. I invite Mary Turgeson to deliver our first scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The King of the Lord shines upon you. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look out. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. O oh God, with your judgment and 
endow the king with your justice, endow the king's son. With justice he will govern your people, your afflicted ones with right judgment. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Justice shall flower in his days, lasting peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. The kings of Tarshish and the isles offer gifts. Those from Seba and Arabia bring tribute. All kings shall pay him their homage. All nations shall serve him. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Every nation on earth will adore you, Lord. Even Jewish converts to Christ maintained the ancient belief that the Jewish people were God's only chosen people. Paul says, God has now revealed a long secret mystery, namely that Gentiles too are to enjoy God's favor because of Christ. Our faith isn't a treasure meant to be kept to ourselves, but a gift meant to be shared with others. I ask Ed Halschwandner to deliver our second scripture. It's a short reading, so I'm going to ask Ed to uh, deliver it again, but this time to unmute himself. And this is a technological expert. <laughs> He's actually unmuted, so there must be something else. Uh -oh. he, sh he shows up as unmuted. Okay. It's his own volume his own volume switch on his laptop. If he can't, do you want me to do it? Yes, please, Mary. Okay. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit. Namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. That the Gentiles are co-heirs members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Glory to you, o Christ, proclaim the Gentiles. Glory to you, o Christ, believed in throughout the world. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. <clears throat> 
Brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the good news according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, to you Lord. Lord. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. Well, when King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, Herod inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go, search diligently for the child. And when you found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising went ahead of them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. For our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Just as I was driving up to the church this morning, I thought to myself, gee, we're really lucky. We haven't had too many technological glitches. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that one, Ed. We call them three kings, and we'll even sing their song at the end of our service, We Three Kings of Orient Are. Tradition and folklore have numbered them as three, although scripture doesn't tell us how many there were, just how many gifts they brought. Tradition has even given them names, Caspar, Melchior, and Baltazar, although they misspelled Caspar with a C instead of a K. And scripture doesn't call them kings. The scriptural word is more appropriately translated as magi or sorcerers or stargazers. They are representatives of the world outside the circle of the Jewish people. They embark on an arduous journey, placing their hopes on finding something wonderful, following a heavenly sign, possibly very similar to the phenomenon that we recently witnessed in the night sky, the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn. The gospel story then isn't about three kings as much as it is about two kings. The first king, Herod, we know something about from ancient historians. Let me tell you a bit about this Herod the Great. Herod's father and grandfather had been supporters of Rome and rulers of provinces in Palestine. Herod's father appointed him governor of Judea. Eventually, in the midst of conflict over succession to Julius Caesar, Herod fled to Rome and succeeded in getting himself declared king of Judea by the Senate. Returning to Palestine, he also gained control over Galilee and eventually, by marrying the daughter of his chief rival, became de facto king of the Jews. He was a ruthless ruler, known for his excessive taxation. He built Roman-style cities, cities and began rebuilding the expansion of the Jerusalem temple. He also had considerable conflict within his domestic life. He had five wives, one of whom he had executed, and executed two of his sons when he feared they were conspiring against him, and just days before his death had a third son executed. Our gospel writer Matthew is drawing a sharp distinction between Herod, 
king of the Jews, and Jesus, king of the Jews. He's also offering a counterpoint between Jerusalem, the great city, the center of power and importance, and Bethlehem, the backwater village on the edge of nowhere. When Herod heard the news of these visitors from the east in search of a child born king of the Jews, he was admittedly frightened, of course, and all Jerusalem with him. The Magi say their intent is to go to the newborn child and pay him homage. We should have in mind a formal act of acknowledgement and honor a subject might offer to a king or a ruler. So there are two kings in this story, not three. The two kings are rivals, both king of the Jews. One is Jesus, one is Herod. Herod represents the power and ruthlessness of the world, willing to take any action to gain and consolidate power. And once he has it, to use everything and everyone at his disposal to display and project his wealth and prestige. On the other hand, the king of the Jews born in Bethlehem, born to ordinary poor folk who are at the mercy of the other king, whose experience of his kingship is terror and fear, who flee their home for another country in search of safety. That king of the Jews will grow up to proclaim the kingdom of God's reign, a reign not of power and fear, not maintained by bloodshed, but a reign of peace and justice. Jesus' life will end as he is proclaimed king of the Jews by the charges leveled against him by the Roman Empire as a revolutionary, a rabble rouser. Like the Magi, you and I stand between these two kings, these two kingdoms. Our journey in search of Jesus has brought us to this place to a crossroad. We want to make homage to the king of the Jews, but do we realize what that truly means? Are we able to make that journey? Herod's kingdom may beckon to us with power and wealth, even with its ruthlessness, but the kingdom of the one born in Bethlehem, whose parents fled with him to Egypt, who preached mercy and love, and whose life ended on the cross in Herod's city of Jerusalem, that kingdom and that king beckons us as well. To whom will we pay homage? Before whom will we offer our gifts? This year, perhaps more than any Christmas before, the last line of today's gospel takes on new meaning. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. In the midst of the darkness of a pandemic, that has enveloped our world. The light of Christ beckons us to a different way, an alternative route through the struggles and frustrations, the fears and anxieties we've been facing and will continue to encounter for some time to come. Jesus has found a home in our hearts this Christmas. In his spirit, he dwells with us and among us as friend and confidant, as leader and guide, as traveling companion, as we make our way through uncharted waters and unknown pathways. The darkness around us is real. It is always threatening, often frightening or terrifying. As one poet wrote of Epiphany, so this is how you call your chosen ones to journey, Lord, through thick darkness, hazardous terrain, strange circumstance, no one, it seems, comes to you in summer light and certain. Therefore, we venture the darkness, trusting the tiny star of hope, setting our course to be led by light into endless light. Today, the prophet assured us, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, thick clouds the people. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. As we begin this new year, keep your sight on that light who is Christ. He is the light that no darkness 
can overcome. Not now, not ever. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us intercede for our needs and the needs of all our nations upon whom the glory of Christ, the glory of God has shown in Christ. I invite uh, John and Domini Tarmini to lead our prayers. For God's holy church, that its light may beckon a rich diversity of peoples to come and be heirs with us, members of one body of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For nations covered by clouds of ethnic and racial hatred, poverty, and hunger, that in this new year, hearts might be able to rejoice at the dawn of peace and an end to terrorism and the horror of war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <laughs> For all who earnestly seek the face of God, that the faith, hope, and love of believers may guide them to the revelation of God's grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may faithfully offer Christ the gold of a living faith, the incense of our worship, and the myrrh of compassion for others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our Diocese of Oakland, in all its diversity, may its mission and ministries help the light of Christ shine forth throughout the East Bay so that all will come to know the hope offered by the birth of God's Son among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That those who have left this life may joyfully enter heaven and behold God face to face, especially the mother of Jack King, Damian Panessa, and Ramona Sanders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, Lord hear our prayer. In silence. Let us bring our personal needs and intentions to God. We have seen the star of your glory rising in splendor, Lord God of the nations. The radiance of your word made flesh pierces the darkness and signals the dawn of justice and peace. Hear our prayers and may that brightness illumine our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in praying in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, 
and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. On this Feast of Epiphany, I invite you at home with your families to share that peace with one another. Those of us worshiping alone, extend that peace to each other in our hearts. Although we cannot be together to share the Eucharist in person around the Lord's table, we know the Lord's desire to be with us. And so we pray a prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus you, are you are with us, us always, especially when we gather in your name to hear, to hear your word in scripture and be fed by your sacred body and blood. When we cannot physically come to the Eucharistic table, be with us still. May your real presence fill our hearts and send us with love to care for the earth and all our brothers and sisters. Amen. Guide us always and everywhere, Lord, by your light from on high, that we may discern with clear minds and treasure with deep affection the mystery you have given us to share. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks to everyone for joining in prayer this morning. Uh, thanks to our readers and musicians and families. Uh, next Sunday is the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord. It's really the conclusion of the uh, Christmas season. And at that time, we will renew our own baptism and baptismal promises. So I invite you to have a container with water uh, with you next Sunday so that you can sign yourself as we renew our baptismal promises. I'll be sharing communion outside the front doors of the church today at 1030 and 1230 for those uh, who wish to receive. This Wednesday at our town hall gathering from seven to eight, um, we usually cover topics of both import and interest, inspirational. But this week, as we uh, close this Christmas season, we're going to take a lighthearted and fun look at the holiday season. There'll be some uh, videos, uh, videos of music, some entertainment and uh, humor. So uh, do plan on joining us. Don't forget uh, Chris Frementi at Manja Pizza uh, invites you to have your takeout uh, pasta or pizza at Manja's on Tuesdays. And uh, if you say you're from St. Perpetua's, then we share in the proceeds from that dinner. We'll close uh, with the hymn. We three kings.
Since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light to all your brothers and sisters. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone, and a good week. Stay safe, and uh, see you Wednesday or Sunday.